What's going on guys? Probably gonna notice that there's a lot less stuff in the garage. That's because it's all behind the camera. Today, we're gonna try to, hold on. Today's the day we're gonna try to fix the terrible job of the rock solid stuff on the floor. If you guys haven't seen the first video of the floor stuff where we're putting on rock solid, the way rock solid says to put it on, uh, and then the floor ended up like this. Make sure to watch the first video so you can see how we originally did it. And today we're gonna be attempting to fix it, but not all of it. I'll explain, but yay. So we're just putting, Luke is just putting down the, the tape so that we can paint up until these points. So uh, if you guys haven't noticed, the floor doesn't have a like polished look. Like it looks like this. Can you see that? Do you see the inaccuracies? And then you have areas like this where there's enough material. Like compare this material with this material. This is what this is using the uh, strategy that Rock Solid says to use. This is Chase saying, okay, obviously you have no clue what you're doing, so I'm going to put more material. Long story short, Rock Solid doesn't recommend you, they like a super light coat. No, don't do a light coat because then you're going to see your dang concrete. Also, if you, God forbid, if you patch your floor, where's, look at this area. Tell me where you think the patching is. Yep, you're right. It's right here where you can totally tell. Yep, show us, Luke. Yeah. Well, you covered it up right here really well. Oh, you can see right here. Yeah, there you go. Perfect example of the patchwork that I didn't put a super thick layer on. Um, and I also know why this is glossy. Why? And this is not. Uh huh. You remember we put the anti scuff? Yeah. That's why this is textured like this because it's like got the grains of grit. Yeah. So if you want a floor that you don't slip on, it's not going to be super smooth and glossy. Okay, so that's the problem, right? So my solution was to get three more of the rock solid, um, rock solid metallic floor coating in gunmetal, which is the same color as I as what this is. It took us three and a half of those to do this entire garage super lightly. So my plan is to use those three and only cover this thick area right here. I'm not gonna redo this area because the bikes are always gonna be parked there and stuff's always gonna be over there, but this area is gonna be used to like walk around the motorcycle that we're building. Typically we have a motorcycle lift right here. This camera's getting heavy. You're going to a tripod. Point of the story is today we're putting it on super thick. <laughs> How thick? I can't do it. Can't be serious about it. Uh, point of uh, the whole point of today is to put this stuff on as thick as we feel necessary, so that it can have the look we want in the active part of the garage. Hopefully, this all works, and you guys will be able to know actually how to put on rocks. Like, it's like this stuff is not cheap, and even says it on the box: two kits needed for one car garage. So four kits. There's no way four kits would do the job and make it look like they say it. So watch this video, see what happens. I have no affiliation with Rust-Oleum or Rock Solid, obviously, because I'm talking shit about their product. Uh, but yeah, I think it looks cool. I take that back. I think it can look cool. That's why we're doing it. Yeah. As long as you put it on thick. All right, so we're going to get that process going and we'll catch up with how that goes throughout the day. I just thought about it and I really hope that this material just attaches to itself. Like, you'd think it would, right? Or just... I asked you that. I feel like it will. And you were like, yeah, bro, totally just, you know, like... And so I was like, all right. We're gonna go with that. We're just gonna keep rolling with it. Also a note for you guys that are doing this, don't get the cheap little plastic extendable paint roller at whatever home improvement store you go to, because ours about broke. Also, keep in mind that your paint roller is probably going to not spin after this, so 
don't use a really nice one or anything like that. All right, I need the boxes of stuff. All right guys, this is a time sensitive process, so we're not gonna talk a lot, but we just gotta do the thing. I'm gonna put some gloves on. If you guys want instructions on how to like buy the book, do this stuff, you can watch the other video. It's not gonna be in this video. Look at the thickness difference of that already. All right, so so far that's looking good. We just gotta hope we have enough buckets. I believe we found a key. You guys hear that? There's no like paint sounding while he's doing that, which I'm pretty sure means that you've got the right amount. Because the first time, every time we did that, it was just. have tons of stuff on them so I can't touch you so you're stuck there but here's what it is Realistically, with this, probably needed, for what we did, we needed one more bucket to get a good coat on this end piece. Alright guys, so we just finished up putting the first layer on. It's obviously very wet still. So with, how many buckets do we have? Three? Three buckets just for that area. And still, this part still didn't have enough. Cause like, so if you're doing this, it'll make sense. If you're not doing this, this won't make any sense. But when you're putting it on, if you hear that painting noise, what, what how do you describe that noise? Like, like when the, you're rolling paint on a wall. Yeah. If it sounds like paint rolling on a wall, then it's thin. It's not thin enough. Yeah. Or it's, it's too thin. It's, it's thin, it's not thick. It's not thick. Like, you can't play around with this thickness, y'all, because otherwise you're gonna get a shitty product. Like, no joke. I already know that this front area is not gonna be thick enough, so I'm assuming probably later down the road, like, these buckets cost $100 a box. Shit's expensive. Don't read the box. Like, there's no way you get that much out of it. You'll probably get 
about 60 percent of what that box tells you is how much actual surface you're gonna get so this takes i think 24 hours to dry to be road dry like you can ride vehicles onto it so eight to ten hours walk on ready 24 hours drive ready 24 hours drive ready eight to ten hours just walk ready Okay, so in 8 to 10 hours, we'll be able to move everything in the garage. Uh, at this point, we'll catch back in with you guys. Damn it, dude. I can already see places that it's not thick enough. I, I don't know if I can recommend this product for as much as it costs to put it on in a good way. I'll catch back up with you guys and let you know once it dries after 8 hours, uh, I'll show it to you and we'll see where we're at. I mean, it definitely looks better. There's no lie, especially like this area and stuff and some of this, I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off all my judgment and feelings until I see what the photo looks like, so. Cut to that footage. Alrighty, ladies and gents, it is 14 hours uh, from when we put the concrete floor shit on. Uh, I was gonna check in last night when me and Heather got home, but it was a little too late. And, that certainly looks a lot better than it did. Check the floor out. Oh God, the first step. Ah! Okay, that was probably not a smart way to check, to check if it was dry, but wow, this looks a lot better. You guys can see that uh, we took everything that was outside yesterday and just crammed it into the corner. This is the area we didn't paint. So let's find a spot. Like, look how much better this looks. And see, these areas, we didn't really paint these, but we kind of just brushed a new layer on, and even that is a lot better. But compare that to like, for one, look how reflective it is now. And it's actually thick. Now, if you guys notice these areas, this is literally just dirt. But let's find an area over here like look at that difference like look at this material right glossy looks cool kind of cloudy and then you have that this is a perfect shot right here this is the difference in making it the correct thickness and doing it how everybody says to do it and how the rock solid box says to do it that's going to be your quality difference if you want to have these little like wavy looking crap then, you know, go by the instructions and go by what everybody else on YouTube tells you. If your floor, if you want it to look like this, then you're gonna have to do it that real thick level. There's a couple bubbles in the floor. Honestly, I don't give a shit about the bubbles. The hell is that? Uh -huh. Oh my God. I said something to Luke yesterday. I was like, dude, I wonder what happens if a fly stays here. You guys, let me know in the comments what we should name this fly, because he's here forever. Like, in a few years, they're gonna be able to get this fly's DNA and make a dinosaur or something. All right, so, so there you go, guys. That's the rock solid stuff. I'm so happy with how that looks, because this is, the floor actually looks like I wanted it to look now. I'm so happy with that. I'm now considering doing that section just because this looks so good. This stuff is just so expensive. If you're gonna do rock solid correctly, these boxes cost like $100 a box. So this floor is right now, I think it costs like 700 bucks. So it's, you gotta be ready to pay that. But there you go, you have to put it on thick. If you're gonna do rock solid, that's the decision you need to make. Do I want to have a really good product? And if so, I'm gonna have to pay a good bit of money. I'm gonna put this camera on this little, Thing. Hopefully it'll stay. So yeah guys, that's the end of this video. I'm gonna get all my garage stuff put back where it is. I don't think I'll make another video. This is this seems like it, even if I ended up doing the other side. I don't think I'll make a video about it because it's not that big of a deal. But hopefully this helps you guys out that are doing the rock solid stuff to your garage floor because the stuff really, like the product that we have now really does make your garage floor look awesome, especially compared to like concrete, but it's frustrating when you do a lot of research online and then everybody else online somehow gets a different quality than you did when you did exactly what they did. You know what I mean? Just don't like it. Anyway guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. If you uh, enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button 
And uh, if you like the garage, make sure to subscribe. I do a ton of videos here in the garage, and uh, it's a good time. You guys go out there and ride positive. See you on the next one. Later.